Hi guys, and welcome back to the Super Data Science series on web scraping, where we're working with Scrapey, the library that lets us build our own custom spiders where we can go out and retrieve data on the web. As a quick recap, in our last video, we started building our second spider. We also discussed HTML or hypertext markup language, which is essentially the way all websites are structured on the internet. We're also going to take a look at CSS or cascading style sheets because CSS is used in conjunction with HTML in the sense of it's used to style all the web pages. So really, if you look at each website, there are two main crucial components apart from the programming language that make it function and do things. You're really looking at HTML and CSS combined with, uh, say for example, JavaScript, but CSS and HTML to add text and elements and to also style them to give them colors. For example, on click change to this, so CSS is what is really the uh, design element to the web pages, but we can use them as selectors to run our spiders on. So it's just another thing to take into consideration. On that note, let's take a look at CSS really quickly so we don't have to jump back to it once we get started with our spider and running some other commands. If we pull up, let's say Chrome, and we take a look at CSS, you know, now the version of CSS is actually CSS3. You could take a look at the Mozilla Developer Network you can also take a look, for example, you now let's go here just to give you a couple highlights. Now we do have our H1 elements, but you can see some CSS selectors. You know, we're giving it a background color, uh, color, text align, font family, font size, and you can scroll through to see some CSS examples and some other CSS information. If you want to take a look at the MDN notes, you know, feel free to browse through that. It just gives you further information about CSS. And one last thing we're going to take a look at, which I think it will help visualize CSS further. So we're gonna end up, we're gonna scrape the following page with our second spider. We're gonna scrape the super data science, artificial intelligence page, just as an example. And if we open this to inspect it, we can scroll through the HTML and we can see, let's look for some CSS. We can see some style information, like see right here, style is in text align, um, font size. So these are some CSS style that are passed in and we can use CSS elements as selectors when we're running our spiders in addition to HTML elements. For example, if we look at some scrapey documentation, you can see you could, they state that you can try selecting elements using CSS with the response object. And if we take a look Further, you know, let's look at this right here. There are two things to note. One is that we've added text to the CSS query to mean that we want to select only the text elements directly inside the title element. So we are using the, the CSS off of the response to look for the title. It just gives you some additional references to work with both, you know, CSS and HTML. I think it's a good idea to understand if we're going out and scraping web pages to actually know how the web pages are set up is the more, the more you know about how the web pages are set up, you know, the better spiders you're gonna be able to create. Okay, so we can move back to our spider now after going through the CSS information. We're actually going to try out a new little trick that's going to give us some additional context about the page we're actually going to scrape. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna launch a terminal. So launch a terminal on your machine. Make this a little bigger so it's easier to visualize. And we're gonna actually use the scrapey shell. But first, we need to activate our environment. I'm gonna source activate. And my name was Scrapey Environment. Let that run. And as you can see, Scrapey Environment is open. If you're on Windows, just use Activate Scrapey Environment. If you're on Linux, use the Source Activate, just like Mac OS, use Source Activate and the name of your environment. Now, what I want to run is Scrapey Shell. And as you see, it comes up with some information about the Scrapey library and the scrapey shell and this is just to test just to get a visualization so don't really go too far into it because we're going to be using our environment and our spider further but the scrapey shell lets us do some experimenting and we're going to use the fetch command which it's going to go out and retrieve the page that we're going to scrape so it gives us a visualization you can also go visit it but it's nice to be able to work through the terminal and the shell to see really what you're working with so what we're gonna do now is write the command fetch to go out and fetch, and we're gonna pass in our web address. So it will be https www 
too many W's. Dot super data science dot com slash artificial intelligence. And we need to close our parentheses, close bracket, and we're gonna run that. And you can see from the information that it crawled the page that we wanted. And I'm gonna look for the file real quick and bring it up for you. So let me pause this video for a moment. And actually I take that back. What it does is it's gonna go out and grab the information that we wanted scraping. So I got a little far ahead of myself this time. We need to look at the response because what it did was store it in a response object, which we can now access through scraping. We're going to use the following command. We want to view it, view our response. And as you can see, it returned the page that we're going to scrape as a response, as stored as a response object and stored as a file. And now you may be wondering you know, why, why do that when I could just go visit the page and pull up the inspector? Because one thing to take away from this method is that you're actually working with the response object that now it actually, you can access the data in the file as raw text, which then you can go and select elements from it and create further data structures or lists or, you know, uh, organized by title and compare it with the element on the page. It's another tool to help you get further data, but let's take a look with what we can do with that. Now we can launch our terminal and we see we were working with our response, the view response, which brought up our page to actually access the data, the raw data, we can use the print command. We can use print response dot text, close parentheses, and run that. And if we take a look, it's bringing up, it is in the terminal, but it is bringing up the elements of the page. And you can see that it, it does a good job of now we're looking at um, list item, we're looking at, you know, div tags, we're looking at um, UL, so it could be on order list or part of a list element, H2, and we could scroll up and we could take a look through this. You know, it's one way of accessing it, it right in the terminal. We can actually pull it up and now compare it. Say we loaded the page and use the inspect element to compare further elements with, but it's, again, it's just helping you visualize and seeing the data that's on the page that you can scrape. And now from here, you can actually go and select elements with the response object uh, and the, also you know, using CSS and the uh, elements that you would like to select. And you can start examining them and start searching for them within the data that you just retrieved. So it's, it, again, it's another way to work through it, another way to scrape the data. But that being said, and having gone through this, we're gonna jump back in now and start working with our spider again. Just wanted to bring you this other option or another tool and conjecture to use with your spider. You know, it's always great and useful to see methods on how you can analyze the data and the text that's on the page. Great job so far getting through that. Now we have all that useful information that we can put to use. And in order to do so, we can jump right back to our spider now that we have the page that we're gonna scrape the next thing that we have to do is set our URL. So we have the name of our spider we previously passed in and we are going to enter to go into to the next line and we're gonna do our start URL. We're only gonna use one for this example. So we'll do start URL and we will pass in the, we're gonna to have to set our equal sign and we're gonna pass in the link. Apologize, we want square brackets. We're gonna pass in the link that we're gonna set for our scraping. So we'll be using ping, setting the link, uh, superdatascience.com slash artificial intelligence. We also wanna add our closing parentheses and return it and closing brackets. So you have that, uh, another space for some organization and we are going to set up our parsing now we're not going to go into it we're going to go into it in the next video just because we have gone through a nice chunk of information and i hope you guys are learning a lot as we work through it so let's set up our parsing we define parse and we'll set ourself and response to get ready to set up the specific elements that we want to parse but again fantastic job 
I hope you guys are taking a lot away from this. You know, now it's a good time again to take a break before we move into the next lecture where we're going to be building out the rest of this spider. And we're going to retrieve information from that page and work on from there. And as a last note, as always, if you have any questions or comments or ideas, please feel free to share them. It's just another great way to learn. And please subscribe to the Super Data Science channel. It's just such a beneficial way to stay in tune and informed on what's going on within the industry and stay up to date with weekly information. All right, on that note, I will see you in the next video and we'll continue with our spider.